to superclusters on a chart of mass and radius now that someone has but the results raise some very intriguing and possibly a little disturbing questions. The chart is the work of Dr. Charles Lineweaver and graduate student Van Patel. They used a log-log graph because nothing else could cover the many orders of magnitude in both size and mass between the very small and the very large. Patel said in a statement that certain areas are forbidden by known laws or where quantum mechanics blurs the very nature of what it really means to be a singular object. Perhaps the most significant part of the chart is the black line that separates the area marked as forbidden by gravity from the space populated by familiar objects. Along this line are dotted black holes. As Lineweaver explained, the larger the mass of a black hole, the lower its density. Although the leftward part of the line is theoretical, scientists have observed a range of black hole sizes from remnants of collapsed stars to the largest supermassive black holes, and this pattern is established and understood. However, following the line upwards, we learn that the entire observable universe, the area that sits within the Hubble radius, is also on that line. In other words, if a black hole was as large as the universe we can see, it would have the same density as the universe. Is the universe then a black hole? And if so, what does that mean? Let's find out. Normally, the universe is governed by two sets of rules. Quantum mechanics for particles and their electromagnetic and nuclear interactions, and general relativity for masses, gravity, and the curvature of spacetime. Quantum mechanics tells us that all particles exhibit wave-like properties and have some level of intrinsic uncertainty between position, momentum, and energy. Time, in particular, has a wavelength associated with it, a Compton wavelength which explains how it scatters in collision. If you were to take a photon's wavelength and convert it into mass via Einstein's equation E equals mc2 E equals mc2 E equals mc2, you'd get a massive particle's Compton wavelength. Similarly, you can take a black hole's mass and calculate how big its event horizon is, the region where space is curved so severely that nothing, not even light, can escape. If you were to take a fundamental particle and allow it to be more and more massive, you'd very quickly reach a point where that particle's Schwarzschild radius, a measure of its event horizon, was bigger than the Compton wavelength, about 21 micrograms. The fact that black holes in our universe are much, much more massive than this isn't a problem. It simply means that the laws of physics that we know break down at the singularity we calculate at the center. If you ever want to describe it accurately, it's going to take a unification of quantum theory with general relativity, a quantum theory of gravity. As it stands, however, we can calculate what happens to spacetime inside the event horizon, all the way up to but not including the central singularity. Surprisingly, with just a coordinate transformation, the space inside a black hole can be mapped one-to-one -one onto the space outside a black hole. But we can also calculate what happens exactly on the boundary of the event horizon, which is interesting for the reason that any observer outside the black hole will see all the information from the particles that fall into the black hole encoded on the horizon. For our universe's black holes, which form in three spatial dimensions, this two-dimensional surface encodes the full suite of information of what fell in. From our perspective, the singularity isn't naked, meaning that we're prevented from viewing it by the presence of the event horizon. The event horizon acts like a protective, opaque wrapping around the black hole. As the black hole first formed from a star's core imploding and collapsing, the event horizon first came to be, then rapidly expanded, and continued to grow in area as more and more matter continued to fall in. If you were to put a coordinate grid down on this two-dimensional wrapping, you would find that it originated where the grid lines were very close together then expanded rapidly as the black hole formed, and then expanded more and more slowly as matter fell in at a much lower rate. This matches, at least conceptually, what we observe for the expansion rate of our three-dimensional universe. So, could our universe not have originated from a true singularity, but rather as the three-dimensional wrapping of a collapsing, growing four-dimensional black hole? Perimeter Institute and University of Waterloo researchers Naif Sheikh, Reza Porhassan, and Robert Mann proposed this idea back in 2014, and despite their best attempts, scientists have been unable to rule out the scenario. While higher dimensions may be well outside our experience, they could very well be responsible for our cosmic origins. Does that mean that every time a supermassive star collapses in a Type II supernova and creates a central black hole, a new two-dimensional universe is created? As crazy as it sounds, the answer appears to be maybe. The event horizon, as far as we understand it, 
must encode the full suite of information of all the particles that fell into the black hole over its entire history. The black hole's surface area is exactly the right size to contain all the information necessary and no more. Could our universe be the analogous realization of a four-dimensional black hole with a three-dimensional event horizon? It's a possibility that's too great for us not to consider, marvel at, and wonder. And just maybe, it brings up the possibility that if we were to fall into a black hole in some way, we'd live on for eons in an entirely new universe. After all, while having said that black holes present a significant challenge to our understanding of the universe, their existence questions the nature of space-time and matter itself. The study of these gluttonous monsters continues to provide valuable insights into the nature of the universe, challenging our understanding of fundamental concepts in physics. In a shocking revelation, scientists have stated that they finally found the first evidence that black holes are the source of dark energy the largest missing part of the universe according to the standard model of cosmology. Our universe, made of 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, and just 5% normal matter, began from a small, dense, nearly perfectly uniform state some 13.8 billion years ago in a hot Big Bang and has been expanding, cooling, and gravitating ever since. Measurements from ancient and dormant galaxies show black holes growing more than expected, aligning with phenomena predicted in Einstein's theory of gravity. The result potentially means nothing new has to be added to our picture of the universe to account for dark energy. Black holes, combined with Einstein's gravity, are the source. The conclusion was reached by a team of 17 researchers in nine countries, led by the University of Hawaii and including Imperial College London and the Science and Technology Facilities Council at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. According to study co-author Dr. Dave Clemens from the Department of Physics at Imperial, this is a really surprising result. We started off looking at how black holes grow over time and may have found the answer to one of the biggest problems in cosmology. If the theory holds, then this is going to revolutionize the whole of cosmology because at last we've got a solution for the origin of dark energy that's been perplexing cosmologists and theoretical physicists for more than 20 years, said study co-author Dr. Chris Pearson from the Science and Technology Facilities Council at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. In the 1990s, it was discovered that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. Everything is moving away from everything else at a faster and faster rate. This is difficult to explain. The pull of gravity between all objects in the universe should be slowing the expansion down. To account for this, it was proposed that dark energy was responsible for pushing things apart more strongly than gravity. This was linked to a concept Einstein had proposed but later discarded a cosmological constant that opposed gravity and kept the universe from collapsing. This concept was revived with the discovery of the accelerating expansion of the universe, with its main component being a kind of energy included in space-time itself called vacuum energy. This energy pushes the universe further apart, accelerating the expansion. Black holes posed a problem, though. Their extremely strong gravity is hard to oppose, especially at their centers where everything seems to break down in a phenomenon called a singularity. The new results show that black holes gain mass in a way consistent with them containing vacuum energy, providing a source of dark energy and removing the need for singularities to form at their centers. The conclusion was made by studying 9 billion years of black hole evolution. Black holes are formed when massive stars come to the end of their life. When found at the centers of galaxies, they are called supermassive black holes. These contain millions to billions of times the mass of our sun inside them in a comparatively small space, creating extremely strong gravity. Black holes can increase in size by accreting matter, such as by swallowing stars that get too close, or by merging with other black holes. To discover whether these effects alone could account for the growth of supermassive black holes, the team looked at data spanning 9 billion years. The researchers looked at a particular type of galaxy called giant elliptical galaxies which evolved early in the universe and then became dormant. Dormant galaxies have finished forming stars, leaving little material for the black hole at their center to accrete, meaning any further growth cannot be explained by these normal astrophysical processes. Comparing observations of distant galaxies with local elliptical galaxies showed growth much larger than predicted by accretion or mergers. The black holes of today are 7 to 20 times larger than they were 9 billion years ago. Further measurements with related populations of galaxies at different points in the universe's evolution were consistent with this, ruling out other explanations. 
The team was then able to step further and propose that the black holes contain vacuum energy, making them the source of dark energy. If this is the case, then the measured amount of dark energy in the universe can be accounted for by the black hole vacuum energy, meaning black holes are the source of dark energy. This revelation challenges our fundamental understanding of the universe's composition and evolution. For decades, dark energy has perplexed cosmologists, acting as a mysterious force driving the accelerated expansion of the universe. Initially hypothesized to counteract gravity's pull, dark energy's exact nature remained elusive until now. The groundbreaking study suggests that black holes, with their immense gravitational influence and dynamic evolution, might hold the key to this cosmic puzzle. Imagine a scenario where black holes not only devour matter and light, but also contribute significantly to the fundamental properties of space-time itself. According to the team's findings, black holes accumulate mass over billions of years in a manner consistent with containing vacuum energy, a component theorized to permeate the fabric of the universe. This vacuum energy, similar to dark energy's proposed characteristics, exerts a repulsive force on spatial scales vast enough to influence the universe's overall expansion dynamics. The implications of this discovery extend far beyond astrophysics and cosmology, touching upon our understanding of fundamental physics principles. Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes gravity as curvature in spacetime caused by mass and energy, is central to our understanding of black holes and their behavior. The integration of black hole dynamics with vacuum energy not only provides a potential explanation for dark energy, but also suggests a profound interplay between quantum mechanics and gravity at cosmic scales. Moreover, the study underscores the interconnectedness of astronomical observations with theoretical physics. By scrutinizing the growth patterns of black holes across cosmic epochs, researchers have unearthed compelling evidence linking their evolution to the cosmic acceleration observed today. This convergence of observational data and theoretical models represents a significant milestone in cosmological research, potentially reshaping our conceptual framework of the universe's evolution from its inception to the present day. From a theoretical standpoint, the notion that black holes serve as reservoirs of vacuum energy challenges traditional views on the fate of matter and energy within these cosmic behemoths. Instead of collapsing into singularities where physical laws break down, Black holes may harbor a mechanism that not only sustains their existence, but also contributes to the universe's accelerating expansion. This paradigm shift prompts a reevaluation of how we interpret the nature of space, time, and the fundamental forces governing our universe's vast expanse. Furthermore, the implications for future astronomical research are profound. If black holes indeed play a pivotal role in driving cosmic acceleration, it opens avenues for new observational strategies and theoretical frameworks. Understanding the precise mechanisms through which black holes accumulate mass and interact with their surrounding environments could unveil deeper insights into the nature of dark energy and its implications for the fate of the universe. In practical terms, confirming these findings requires continued scrutiny and refinement of observational techniques. Advanced telescopes and space-based observatories will be essential in tracking the growth and behavior of black holes across different cosmic epochs. By comparing data from distant and local galaxies, scientists aim to corroborate the study's conclusions and refine our understanding of how black holes contribute to cosmic evolution. Moreover, interdisciplinary collaboration between astrophysicists, cosmologists, and theoretical physicists will be crucial in advancing our comprehension of these cosmic mysteries. Theoretical frameworks integrating quantum mechanics with gravity, such as string theory or loop quantum gravity, may provide additional insights into the underlying physics governing black hole dynamics and their role in cosmic evolution. Ultimately, the quest to unravel the mysteries of dark energy and black holes represents a fundamental quest for humanity's understanding of the cosmos. By probing the deepest recesses of space-time and observing celestial phenomena billions of light-years away, we inch closer to deciphering the fundamental laws governing our universe's past, present, and future. The discovery that black holes may hold the key to understanding dark energy marks a pivotal moment in our cosmic journey, inviting us to explore the unknown and redefine our place in the vast expanse of the cosmos.